coming out on this edition of ATV News. Usually we don't get snow until the leaves are off the trees. We'll tell you why the storm broke all those branches off your trees. People at different stages of life have different perspectives. We will show you why your input now where a fly could you vote for later. I'm sorry I had to give mine away when I moved here. Some local grandmas had some furry visitors over the weekend. We'll show you why the event ended in tears. It's nice and sunny this homecoming week, but on Saturday, could it rain on your parade? I'll give you the odds in weather. Utah State receiver Devin Tompkins pulled in more receiving yards than the entire UNLV team. We'll show you why the Aggies still struggled to get the victory. All that and more, this is ATV News. City Park like Adams Park are closed because of the pile of splinter branches. Logan City says the park will be closed until the branches are cleaned up. Welcome to this edition of ATV News. I'm Ting Yu Chen. And I'm Fai Tifi Puileta. Branches and damaged trees still line the streets of Logan. Our reporter Yvonne Bass joins us live from Champ Drive with the debris. Thanks, Fai Tifi. Um, that's right. Right now I'm on the north end of Champ Drive next to some of the aftermath from the storm. I spoke with some people about their efforts in cleaning up the mess. Snow and broken trees. If you were in Cache Valley last week, you would have woken up to a white October morning. This week the snow has melted, but people are still cleaning up the aftermath. I knew that we had a lot of work to do. Filling their trailers and truck beds to the top, it still takes multiple trips to dump all the debris. Teddy is done eight trailer loads and he estimated about seven more to do. These green waste piles have been building up since the snowstorm. The Logan City landfill has even extended their hours to make more time to help people dump their broken branches. The line of cars coming in and just dumping everything, it was pretty crazy. Unloading their second trailer full, the Betancourts say they had widespread carnage, full on carnage. Um, trees that are very established have now broken and are sheared. For some, the cleanup is a family effort, but it still takes a lot of work. Betancourt says his son was a huge help to him, but it wasn't his ideal snow day. Who would be excited to clean up all that? But yeah, I'd say it was a tough day. Even with everyone's efforts, there's... There's a lot of cleanup left to do around the neighborhood. As you can see, there's still quite a bit of carnage left from the storm. The road is actually closed right now, and we thought it was because of cleanup, but it's actually for some fun street painting up the road. Um, back to you, Faititi. Thanks, Yvonne. Bon. And does the landfill still have their extended hours? Um, no. Logan City says that the landfill has returned to its regular hours. Thanks, Yvonne. Bon. And while people are still cleaning up those broken branches, experts say the tree damage happened for three reasons. First, the snow was wet and much heavier than usual. A lot of leaves still hadn't fallen down the trees, weighing down the trees even more. And because of the types of trees that people plant in their yards. People like to plant these fast growing trees. If you move into a new house, you want to have shade trees. So you plant a fast growing tree. Well, that's not really designed to stand up to wind and snow. Black says heavy snow causes problems in wetter climates, but it's not common here in Utah where we get mostly dry snow. While well, Logan City work on the cleanup, the state government is working on the redistribution. redistribution. You have been in the same voting district for the last 10 years, but MFA shows you how that is about to change. Our charge is to produce a set of maps for the state of Utah. Members of Utah's Independent Redistricting Commission are redrawing Utah's district maps. The commission is bipartisan and looks at maps differently from the legislature. By not looking at political data, that you know, takes us at least a step away to hopefully having maps that really are representing communities and the people that live in those communities. This process really determines who the voters are going to be. The map recommendations to the legislature are almost done. We are starting to narrow down now um, our choices. And so are the hearings around Utah. 
This one in Logan was one of the UIRC's last stops. Now the UIRC hasn't made their full recommendation yet, but we can still compare some of the maps that they've drawn up with the maps that we have right now. This map is Utah's Congressional District's map. There are four districts, with Logan being a part of that top district that covers some of the east half of the state as well. Now, this map is just one of the many that the UIRC has drawn up so far. You can see the biggest difference is that top district no longer covers that east part of the state, with a few differences in population in there as well. So why are we making these changes in the first place, besides just the new census data that we're getting? Some say this map wasn't that representative in the first place. We now have four Republican districts, even though about a third of the voters in the state of Utah tend to vote Democratic. The commission says public input is key to changing this and accurately representing the state in the new maps. If we don't have input from the public, you know, whether that be college students or whether that be you know, retired folks, we're going to miss out on part of what makes each of these communities unique. Your view could impact what the legislature ultimately decides. If it were obvious that there was a strong public preference for a particular plan that's presented by the redistricting commission to be accepted, that the legislature would be hesitant to ignore it. Emma Fates, ATV News. The Commission will present their final map proposal to the Utah Legislature November 1st. Now for an update on the number of COVID cases in Utah. There have been nearly 9,000 new cases in the state since last week, with more than 20,000 active hospitalizations. There have been more than half a million total. In Bear River Health District, which contains Cache, Box Elder, and Rich Counties, there have been almost 700 new cases since last week, with more than 1,000 active hospitalizations. There have been nearly 30,000 total. At USU, there have been 55 new cases since last week, with 101 active cases. There have been almost 400, oh sorry, 4,000 total cases. Utah is still seeing a slow steady increase of vaccination against COVID. 53.9% of Utahians have been fully vaccinating, up 0.4% from last week. In Bear River Health District, 47.2% have been fully vaccinated, up 0.3% from last week. The FDA is planning to approve mixing and matching for COVID-19 booster shots. This means, for example, if you got the Moderna shots, you could get a Pfizer booster shot and vice versa. No matter your original vaccine brand, you can get any brand's booster shot. Right now, booster shots have only been approved for people 65 and over. We will show you why some people won't be celebrating Halloween on the 31st this year. There were record career returns, career days, and big plays for USU football in Vegas. And we'll show you the play that changed their luck. And coming up, we'll have your seven-day forecast. The current temperature in Logan is 58 degrees. Sorry. Big ideas. As a college student, you have big ideas to make a big difference on campus. Why not get funding for those ideas in a big way? The Blue Goes Green grant provides funding for student sustainability projects. These projects help USU students be more environmentally responsible, live healthier, and save money. To find out more, go to usu.edu slash bgg. Get funding for your Blue Goes Green idea in a big way. Blue Goes Green. Make a difference. It's a big responsibility. Oh, it's huge. I know, it's huge. Yeah, and the salary. Oh my god, yes. I right. mean, like, I was literally, I was about to move in with my parents, and <laughs> right before, yeah, so this saved me. I, I really believe in you, you know? Thank you. It's nice to hear that from someone. <laughs> These are cool. Uh, did you, um, what did With October 31st landing on a Sunday this year, you might be wondering what day to trick-or-treat. Yvonne Bass took to the porches to find out. 
I probably will be celebrating it on Saturday. I have some friends who we might be doing a party. Houses are decorated for Halloween, but parents of trick-or-treaters are confused about when to celebrate. I personally would probably not celebrate Halloween on a Saturday, on a Sunday, but um, I'm okay if other people want to do it. Parents point out Sunday is a school night for their children. There are more reasons people are shying from the 31st. Because of religious reasons, and I think that maybe like more people will be on Saturday. Trick or treat is something you might not hear as much on the 31st. The American Census of Religion says that 63% of Cache County are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This religion believes that Sunday is a holy day. Sunday also happens to be the day that the 31st lands on. Even if I was not LDS, I still wouldn't be going out or having my kids go out trick-or-treating. People say that culture can also influence their decision. Where I moved here from, we were always, when there's all, um, Halloween on Sunday, we just do it on Saturday. So I, I thought that this is how they were going to be doing it here. Others say they still might be trick-or-treating on Sunday and hope the candy bowls are still full. We would give them candy if they came knocking. If we have leftover and there's people showed up, we'll give them candy. Yvonne Bass, ATV News. You can leave a comment on our Facebook page when you will be trick-or-treating. We love hearing from you. Candy sales health have increased compared with last year. Halloween candy sales increased by 48% from 2020, and stores Halloween candy start increased by almost 30% from last year. This increase is even bigger in Utah, where we have a much younger population. Utah have the most people under 18 years old in the county. People under age of 18 made up 28% of Utah's population, which is about a million people. And in Cache County, people under 18 make up, make up about the same percentage of, of the state. It was wet tires on wet roads yesterday with water droplets left on these plants after we got rained on here in Cache Valley. Now between yesterday's rain and last week's snow, as you can see, campus was pretty wet. There's still even some snow that hasn't melted on the quad. But today, rain has stopped, beautiful fall colors. There's some heavy fog and heavy clouds over in the mountains. Now let's take a look to see how the rest of the country is comparing to us here in Cache Valley with our national radar. Here we go. You'll see it's pretty quiet around the country with two main notable exceptions. The first over here, it's this weather system. It made its way through Wyoming and it's now it's straight into the Dakotas. It's got with this heavy precipitation. There's been some big rain and even some snow in some areas. Now our other exception is over here in the Pacific Northwest on the West Coast. Again, a big system and this green here this means that it's some heavy rain and so i'm from california we are in a big drought so this rain is much needed and much welcomed so how does that affect us are we can we maybe expect to see some of this rain here in utah let's find out because let's be honest we kind of need it a little bit too so here in the beehive state you'll see that it's also fairly quiet um, we've got some high pressure, which leads to some sunny skies and some relatively warm, temper warm temperatures here. Now, at the end of the week, we can expect these to get cooler and a little unsettled. Let's take a closer look with our seven-day forecast. Now, you'll see Wednesday through Friday, it's going to be pretty warm the rest of the week with highs around the 60s. But on Saturday, with our rain here, this is where things might change. And why is this important? Because we have our USU homecoming parade on Saturday. And last homecoming parade, it was a little wet. This is footage from the last USU homecoming parade back in September 2019. It made a splash. Now you'll see there are puddles in the streets and people, they came with their umbrellas. They came prepared and they were ready to brave out the storm. Now with a 30% chance of rain this Saturday on this year's homecoming parade, the weather is definitely going to be something 
you're going to want to keep an eye on. Now, looking back at the rest of the week, we have a this 30% chance of rain on Saturday. Now, if you get your rain jackets out on that day, you might want to keep them out because here, Saturday, Sunday, Monday through Tuesday, that these rain percentages, they're going to kind of be 40 to 50%. So there is a great likelihood for rain. So make sure you get your raincoats prepared, you get your boots out because the rain is coming. You guys are all caught up on your weather. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Sarah. I'm a um, health fitness company headquarters here in Lowy and is postponing pub slicing in stock. A spokesman from IFSS, they are just waiting for a better time to go properly. The total stock value exp is expecting to reach $6.6 .6 billion. They are also expecting the initial pair share to be between $18 and $21. The company plans to issue more than 30, 30 million shares of its class of common stock. And coming up. You're never really just one thing. We'll tell you if your zodiac sign can determine your likelihood of becoming a serial killer. I don't want the pity, dude. I don't need that from you. Okay, just leave it out short. We pulled those algae to test to see which nails their team out the best. Stick around to find out who wins. Well, I'll keep this one. <laughs> it fits me. This Halloween season, dogs are out to prove they are grandma's best friend. And roll. Every budget, so don't accept defeat. Now you can get covered and still buy me treats. You take care of your pets. Now it's their turn to take care of you. Visit getcoveredamerica.org to learn about your health insurance options. Hey Aggies, welcome to the Ark. Campus Recreation Fitness is aimed at giving students a fun yet rigorous exercise program that's also social and dynamic. Our fitness program currently consists of a ton of different classes that you can jump into up to 74 different times a week. With classes ranging from HIT, Body Blast, Cycling, Yoga, Zumba, you name it and we have it. Stop. Come check us out at the Aggie Rec Center as we love seeing new friendly faces. Get your game up. UNLV just settled for a touchback. It begins its second possession. And Charles Williams has space. The check wagon can fly. Beats the last safety and Hunter Reynolds. And he's off to the races. One play, 75 yards, and a thrilling start in Las Vegas. The Rebels ran off big plays like the ones you just saw all game long against the Aggie defense, rushing for 219 yards total and three touchdowns. Welcome to ATV Sports, I'm Dalton Renshaw. Utah State football tested its luck down in Vegas Saturday against 0-5 UNLV, and the Aggies needed all the luck they could get in Sin City. Senior wide receiver Savon Scarver shot the Aggies out of a cannon by taking the first touch of the ball 100 yards to the house for the opening touchdown of the game, an NCAA record tying seventh career to return touchdown for Scarver. That put the Aggies up 7-3. But just as quick as the Aggies took the lead, UNLV took it right back as Charles Williams runs almost untouched through the Aggie defense. Look at him go 75 yards on the very next play, taking it all the way to the end zone and putting UNLV up 10 to seven. And of course, being in Las Vegas, Williams celebrates with a pole of the slot machine inside Allegiant Stadium. And after another Williams touchdown put the Aggies, or UNLV up 17 to seven, the Aggies responded with a 37 yard touchdown pass from Logan Bonner to Devin Tompkins. Tompkins earned himself Mountain West Player of the Week with his 180 yard performance. And coming out of the half, Bonner and Tompkins hooked up again, this time from six yards out, and USU took a 21 to 17 lead. But UNLV's rushing attack could not be stopped, and Williams walked in for his third touchdown of the game to go along with 221 yards on the ground for the night, wrestling the lead back from the Aggies late in the third quarter. Utah State's kicking game struggled with three missed field goals in the game, including this 41-yard attempt that was swatted down by the Rebels midway through the fourth quarter. But luckily for the Aggies, the setbacks 
didn't stop them from punching in the final touchdown of the game right here. Elelion Noah cut through the gaps for an 11-yard score, and the Aggies pulled off the 28-24 thriller in the Sin City. With the win, the Aggies improved to 4-2 on the season and host conference foe Colorado State this Friday. In other football news, USU Rotorcraft program threw, flew the family of former head coach Chuck Mills over Maverick Stadium to drop his ashes after he passed away earlier this year. The former Aggie coach from 1967 to 1972 and finished with a 38 to 30, 20, 38 to 23 and one record, including eight and four against state rivals BYU and Utah. In two seasons, Utah State Volleyball has gone from a team that won two of 30 games to a team that is in contention for a conference title. Over the weekend, the Aggies took on two of the league's best, UNLV and San Diego State. Far in this one, able to get half of them in for kills. Thursday, reigning champs UNLV pushed Utah State to play all five sets. The team split the first two sets, but the Aggies started to find their rhythm in the third frame with some great offensive plays like this service ace right here from sophomore Abby Peterson. One of our many on the day. Back set for Katie Langford. Dug out, but that's long, and Corinne Larson stuffs it. 25-16. The Aggies dropped set four, but bounced back to win set five and the match with this kill from Kennedy Boyd. The Aggies would continue on Saturday night and they were back in the spectrum to take on San Diego State, and they made things look easy, sweeping all three sets against conference opponents, San Diego State. Dug up there by Stahl, looking for <laughs> Kylie Stokes, and a good hit down the line. Utah State dominated the net with 11 blocks to four across the three sets, including blocks like this one from sophomore blocker Inka Matola. The Aggies are now in second place in the Mountain West with a 6-2 conference record. In other Aggie news, USU women's soccer continued its way up the table with two draws against Air Force and Colorado College, which puts them five points from the top. And in cross country, the men and women both competed at the Wisconsin Inventational, with the men finishing 11 of 32 and the women finishing 13 out of 36 schools. With Utah State basketball right around the corner and a new batch of players coming in over the offseason, we wanted to know, how well do the current Aggies know their teammates? What better way to test this out than through a game show? Senior guard Brock Miller and junior center Trevin Dorius came to the studio to put their knowledge to the test. Welcome everyone. Today we have junior center Trevin Dorius and senior guard Brock Miller. How are you guys doing today? Good, how about you? Too bad, not too yeah. bad. How are you doing? I'm Happy. doing great. Awesome, cool. So today we're going to see how well you know your teammates. I have five players listed, three clues apiece. I'm going to give you 10 seconds per clue. Sound good? Yeah, yeah sounds okay. good. There you go. All right, let's get started. So the first player, this player led his team to a 27-0 record and a state Ryan champion. Jones. <laughs> You're too good, man. You're too good. So the second player, this player wanted to be an astronaut growing up. Feels like a Landon Brinchley sort of a thing. Norbert Peters. No. Okay, I'll move on to the next one. He's played internationally as a member of his country's U19 Max team. Shulga. No. It's Shimon. Nope. Oh, that was a good uh, guess. I thought, yeah. Okay, last clue. Z. No. A slam dunk champion for his college. Sean Berstow. Sean Berstow, you got it, yeah. I thought the, I thought the first one was pretty easy. All the four <laughs> all the <laughs> Just go through all the players. <laughs> so we're done, guys. That's all the players. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one. This player scored a team high 29 points in the second half alone of the Geico High School Nations opener his junior year in high school. I'm gonna get this one. Oh. That's really nice. I don't think you need the pity. Do you want the pity? I don't want the pity, dude. I don't need that from you. Stephen Ashworth. Stephen Ashworth, you're right. Goodness sakes, man. So I think we've learned so far Brock knows his teammates Brock pretty knows well. Brock so good, man. Uh, the other two clues I had for Stephen was he's an Eagle Scout Award winner and recorded a season high 17 points last season against San Diego State, including eight for eight from the free throw line. Yeah. All right, so game. fourth one. That was a good game, wasn't it? You had a great game. All right, so fourth clue, or fourth player, sorry. This player tweeted a video of soccer great Ronaldinho saying that he was, the former Barcelona player was who he wanted to be growing up. Any ideas, guys? How well do you know the Twitter sphere for your team? Probably RJ. 
RJ is correct. What RJ the heck, correct. bro? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't good. going well. I'm sorry, no. Trevin. Good thing. Oh, man. Hey, I guess we should make this a team thing. So the next okay. two coming in. The, la the last question yeah. will make this a team thing. Uh, uh, the other I, two. I got this next one. I got the last okay, one. Yeah, I'm not going to say You got this, Trevin. Yeah, I, got this. I, have, I have faith in you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the other two clues for, uh, for RJ were played with his country at the 2018 FIBA U20 European Championships and led his school, UMBC, last season in scoring with 14.3 points per game. All right, last one, guys. This player is the highest rated recruit in school history according to 24-7 Sports. Justin Bean. That is actually not correct. What the heck? Should be though, right? Wait, like coming out of high school he's the highest recruit? Coming out of high school. Oh, no, that probably wasn't. Fair enough. Earned MVP honors en route to a championship for his country at the U-20 Championships. Matt Shulgrim. You're close. Good. You're close. It's not. It's not. Since you guys aren't really probably, familiar. Probably Shimon. It is Shimon. It is yeah. Shimon. I was going to say, you guys he aren't really familiar highly, with the Twitter sphere, yeah. but he, he was, sent the least amount of tweets on the team. Not really that yeah, matters. Yeah, he, he was highly ranked coming out. Yeah. I remember that. Highest rated of, of anybody. Does that surprise you at all? Coming, coming to Utah State? Coming to Utah State. the highest rated player? In program history. Even over Kobe McEwen? Mm -hmm. Really? I think Kobe's fourth, yeah. Kobe's fourth, okay. Yeah. You That's guys cool. did pretty good. Yeah. I mean, Brock kind of took it away, but. What do you mean you <laughs> died, bro? That's what team sports are for. Hey, it's you know, team like, sport, right? bring in the next two and see if they can answer as quick as both of us. That's right. Uh, but yeah, thanks guys for coming in. Yeah, that was awesome. Sure. And that's all we have today for sports. We'll send it back to you at the desk. Go Aggies. Let's go. Thanks, Dalton. Puppies and grandmas. It's a great combination. But when your grandma has to go to a care home, she might have to give up her puppy. Sarah Murphy shows us how one group is trying to soften the blow this Halloween with some furry friends. Oh my goodness, you're a loving little thing, aren't you? A moment of love oh. and a moment of laughter between dogs and residents at Cash Valley Assisted Living Center's Halloween Puppy Parade. We're having a parade, a doggy parade. Workers say for some residents, the presence of puppies Look at all these puppies. brings back some emotional memories. I haven't had this many dogs in my room for a while, I'll tell you. Did you have a favorite dog? All of them. I'm sorry, I had to give mine away when I moved here. It's hard for me to talk about them. A lot of them actually have to kind of give their animals away once they hit a certain point of dementia, and it's super sad. Bringing them in here and they can kind of play and hang out brings them so much nostalgia. This is Storm, one of the dogs from the parade today. Both residents and workers say that dogs like Storm put a positive spin on the day. They're just friendly if you love them and take care of them. Dogs make people happy. And I think some of the residents, you could see them perk up. It does look like the trench I used to see in Texas. From spiders to unicorns, all types of species came to visit. The puppies just fit right in with the Halloween stuff. It, there's a big hoopla about it. We've made doggy treats and everything. Workers say that while the event might have been a lot. No, 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 don't party on the floor. Despite the accidents. I have to take him outside. The work was worth it. My dad has dementia and he's in a uh, care center out of the country. So not being able to visit him, this helps. This is actually good for my soul today. They come here kind of thinking that they're kind of done living their best years. So if I can help kind of make their last few years worth living, they're the reason I do it. So it's definitely worth it. Sarah Murphy, ATV News. Workers say they think the event was a success and they hope to plan more events with puppies in the future. It was your zodiac sign, one of the top sign among serial killers. A recent study says Cancer, Pisces, um, Sagittarius, and Scorpio are the top four signs that make up 38% of all serial killers. But some astrologers say this study is not accurate. There might be a ruling planet, but there are so many different things influencing you that nothing ever determines who you are or what you do. The study determined the percentage of the serial color of each sign, but didn't prove your zodiac sign determined your personality. Thank you for joining us on this edition of ATV News. 
You can find the previous edition on our Facebook page. Keep an eye out on our social media for your chance to be featured on the show. We will leave you with some more show of the Los Adorable Poppies.